Okay, so here's the unboxing of the X309 MSI Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard. Yay! Here we go. We got the Ryzen CPU that's uh, the 1920X um, MSI motherboard, our RGB Vindra's RAM, our power supply, our Kraken X62, and our SSDs. So this is the S340 Elite case. Uh, as you can see, it's got a tempered glass panel. It comes with a hockey puck, so you can do a lot of cable management. It has front I.O. that includes a HDMI and two USB 3s specifically for VR. Um, and I'm just going to get rid of the sticker. Here we go. So, uh, when we try and open the case, which we're going to do in a second. So, these tiny little screws, uh, they're female screws, and uh, they basically come off. And that's what's holding the panel in place, which you can probably imagine. They got rubber bottoms so it doesn't scratch the glass. And uh, yep, there you go, pops right off. Sorry about the lighting. I did this in an evening when when I received uh, all my parts, so uh, it's uh, not the best lighting in the world. So this is a cable management pack. I'll uh, show you this in a second. It's for audio and VR headset. There we go. So as you can hear, it's very magnetic. And uh, it works a treat, to be fair. Moving on to this Threadripper CPU now, we've got, uh, like I said, 1920X. It's the 12 core variant Threadripper. The packaging is uh, it's very well done, to be fair. Okay, so as you can see. Uh, twist that and it pops right off. It pops right off. And it's a nice little retention bracket that uh, is really, really tight on there. Um, so. Just get the other side. There we go. Okay. So underneath this is our little screwdriver. This is attached. Uh, basically, it means that we can't put too much pressure on the CPU, so it automatically. Uh, stops us uh, based on the torque that you're using and some stickers and instruction manual moving on to the board now we have our x309 gaming pro carbon ac motherboard as you can probably imagine it's quite nicely packaged so we'll just move the motherboard to one side now Accessories. We'll go through these in a short time. So there's the motherboard, and uh, we're first going to start off with the AC uh, 802.11ac PCI Express. Um, adapter and that is the USB 2.0 cables for it which I don't quite understand and some antennas um, right and here we go here's some plastic inserts basically if you don't like the carbon fiber kind of look at the motherboard you can change it for silver or gold aesthetic um, personally I stuck with the carbon fiber because you know why not it's literally called the carbon motherboard so um just another msi bag that has some goodies in so io plate always kind of want one of them and next we have the um sata cables one's a 90 degree and one's a straight sata cable the sli high bandwidth bridge this motherboard does support sli as well as uh crossfire Some RGB LED converting cables, I believe, or extension cables. Another set of SATA cables, once again 90 degrees and one straight. I don't know why they didn't put the 90 degrees together and the straights together, but uh, that's just a little thing. And a badge, why not? With the case being a clean, glossy black 
uh, I uh, won't be putting any stickers on. This is interesting, the items, the retention bracket for fans. So basically, uh, you put it on top, at the top of the motherboard uh, by the VRM heatsink. Um, but I don't quite understand the use case for it, because it's either for open air cases uh, or ones without a fan hole on top, which is odd. Um, but it stands off so high, I don't understand what it would be doing in that scenario. So here's the board. So you got your PCI Express x16, x8, x16, x8, and three M.2s and two PCI Express x2 slots. We got our LED debug light. It's the standard gubbins. Move up the board, you need additional power for the PCI Express slots that you can see by there. And there is a small chip you can see just at the top of the screen called the VR Boost. Don't quite understand what that does, so if you know that, put a link or a comment in the uh, comment section. Dual power for the CPU, the giant TR4 uh, socket, and our eight DIMM slots. Plenty of I.O. in terms of uh, SATA, and uh, everything else is uh, just generally what you'd expect. Rear I.O. consists of loads of uh, USB 3s, a USB 3.0 Gen 2 USB-C and Type-A Ethernet audio standard. Moving on to SSDs, we've got a 960 EVO M.2 and two 850 EVOs, the SATA. Okay, so this is our Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM. We're going to be putting 3000 megahertz DDR4 quad channel, 32 gigabytes. And the power supply. Of course, this machine is going to use quite a bit of power, especially if I put dual graphics cards in. So I decided to go for a 1000 more RM1000X with 10 year warranty. This is a gold standard. Um, into the 80 plus. Um, okay, so moving on to the cables. The cables, well, we've got plenty here. We've got our giant uh, array of ATX cable, EPS cables, Visa Express, eight of them, 11 SATA cables, 12 peripheral cables, and two floppy drive adapters, which we won't be using. Okay, so going on to cooling is the Kraken X62 280mm water cooling. We're not going to be opening that. and. The thermal paste I'm going to be using is the GLID Extreme. Okay, so moving on to actually putting this together. Just going to unscrew that, which I did do know I did in the wrong order when unscrewing it. Hopefully uh, it won't make any difference, obviously, because the process wasn't in there. So only when the process is in there, it should be followed in the correct order, which I do follow the correct order now once I put the CPU in. So it should be the top one, and then the side one, and then the one I just put the uh, screwdriver on top of. I didn't actually screw it up. It looked like they did, but I didn't. And there we go. So there we go. That's the motherboard, and all its glory, okay, so and that's the process this is the final build. build. Uh, the, uh, I'm just going to apologize for the RGB lighting. Unfortunately, there's a problem with one of the bits of software. Um, the two dim slots you can see by here. Uh, they have been taken control by the MSI program, but the other two on the DIMM slots uh, on the left hand side, they are still using their default profile. So there we go, that's the build. Thanks for watching.